Amen. Uh, the Requiem Mass this morning is for uh, John Chekis Sr. And at, at um, you know, at Requiem Masses, it is, um, well, it's always beneficial uh, and very profitable to the soul to consider death uh, and one day that it will happen to us. And especially uh, because th- what happens after death? Right? It's, it's, it, this life is not the only life that there is. This, this life will be followed by another one. Uh, and what makes it difficult is um, nobody has seen the other life. I mean, who goes to the next life and then come back, comes back? The answer actually to that is plenty. Plenty of people have gone to the other world and come back and lived to tell the tale. But nobody knows about it. Because the world doesn't want to hear those kinds of stories. The world doesn't believe. But we're going to hear a story about that today. Uh, St. Christina the Astonishing. Her feast day was uh, almost a week ago. It was the 24th Sunday. So I didn't preach about her. But she was a young woman in the 12th century. Who died at 21 years of age from an epileptic seizure. And who um, was resuscitated. Who came back to life during her funeral mass. So the, the, her coffin was right there at the front of the church. Everybody was gathered there celebrating the Mass, and then she sat up in her coffin. And then she flew up to the rafters and sat there like a bird. And everybody ran out of the church screaming, except for two people. Uh, the priest who was saying Mass and her sister, the two most courageous people. And she lived after that another 40 years. And she told people, I have been to purgatory. I was there. I was condemned to purgatory. Not condemned, but, but I realized because of my sins, I needed to spend time in purgatory. And this grace was given me by God to finish my purgatory there or to come back to the earth and do my purgatory here to expiate my sins in this life. And so that's what she chose. Uh, and, and she said, I, I, and I can't remember now if it was um, her, her time for merit had ceased. She was not gaining any merit by these penances she did, but she was ex- simply expiating the sins she had committed during life. And she hadn't lived a bad life. Uh, but what God told her was that you would give the good example to others. Others would see the kinds of penances that um, are necessary to expiate sin for what it really is. And she warned people, do not attempt to do the penances that I will be doing. Um, and uh, so she, um, she had the ability to, to um, she was miraculously preserved from any damage. She, like the, the, the penances, the, the, the torments you will hear she would do, uh, the normal person would have, would have died from, from the wounds they would have caused long ago. But she was always miraculously preserved. So what she would do is she would, um, she lived outside, mostly in caves or in tombs, uh, meditating upon death, uh, in all weather, freezing, the, the absolute freezing winter, um, the, the, you know, the, the heat of summer. Uh, the, the normal person would have died from exposure, uh, but not St. Christina. Her life was preserved. She would uh, throw herself into furnaces. People would see her flesh melting, and then she would come out and be perfectly fine. She would tease packs of wild dogs so that they would attack her and, and, and tear her, and then she would she be, be fine. And she suffered all these torments. She would stay in the freezing water in wintertime. She would go and submerge herself sometime for, for days in the freezing water. Uh, in, in, uh, during when, when the water was flowing, she would, she would drift downstream and sometimes go through uh, wheel works of a mill, and people would see her, like, body being crushed and broken and then come through on the other side perfectly fine. Uh, not, not things normal that the normal person could do. Um, as I said, none of the injuries she suffered would last. And she could, she could smell sin on people. And would, for that reason, was, was mostly avoided people because of, of the stench of sin. But she would often levitate to avoid it. She would fly up to the tops of trees to avoid people. Uh, and lest we think uh, that these, this is uh, fantastic... 
uh, her life was cataloged by a Dominican professor of theology at the Louvain University, 12th century. Uh, he interviewed eyewitnesses and people, those who know her personally, and wrote down what they said. One of them was uh, 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 an eminent and respectable cardinal of the church. Uh, some people called her crazy and insane. Several times she was arrested and put into prison, but she was always released because her, her manner was always charitable and always perfectly obedient. Uh, in fact, at the end of her life, she was kept at a Dominican convent, and the prioress said that was her one uh, outstanding virtue, was absolute perfect obedience to all commands. And several others, uh, other people, others alive at the time, who themselves were later declared blesseds of the church, uh, came to her for advice and testified of her saintly character. Uh, she would experience ecstasies, and often uh, she herself would lead souls from death to purgatory or from purgatory to heaven. Uh, vis visions and abilities she had been given by God. Uh, so she finally, uh, after the 40 years of um, these incredible penances, would uh, return to death for a second time and then immediately uh, be translated to heaven. So St. Robert Bellarmine writes on this. So this would be 300 some years later in the 15, 1600s. Robert Bellarmine says, we have great reason for believing this testimony on account of those two excellent sources we have just mentioned, the Dominican theologian and a cardinal of the highest repute. And besides, um, everybody could see for their own eyes what St. Christina was doing in plain sight. Everybody could see that she was in the midst of flames without being consumed. Everybody could see she was covered with wounds a moment later, which disappeared uh, completely. Uh, more than this, though, was the, was the, um, the marvelous life that she lived uh, after being raised from the dead. That perfect charity, that perfect kindness, that perfect um, obedience to the will of God, uh, these miracles of, of, of returning to life and then being preserved. And, and here is uh, the argument of Bellamin. Uh, thus, he says, God willed to silence those libertines who make open profession of believing in nothing and who have the audacity to ask in scorn, who has returned from the other world? Who has ever seen the torments of hell or purgatory? Behold, St. Christina. She assures, assures us that she has seen them and that they are dreadful. What follows then, if not that those who refuse to believe are inexcusable? And likewise, for those who do believe and yet neglect to do penance are likewise inexcusable. And thus, St. Robert Bellarmine. Uh, so it does. It does behoove us, knowing the lives of these saints, uh, first of all, uh, to believe uh, in the absolute veracity of these reports, uh, attested to by a theologian, by a cardinal of the church, by so many eyewitnesses there alive at the time. We have no reason to believe this is pious fiction every reason to believe this is absolutely true. And this is very consistent with how God acts. He wants to give us overwhelming proof of the next life. He has given us overwhelming helps to get to heaven, not just coming down and dying for us, not just redeeming our sins, but giving us uh, not just one sacrament, but seven sacraments. And not only those, but all of the sacramentals, all of the devotions, all of the helps, the rosary, the visions, the saints, the works of the saints, the writings, the example. Every, everything that God does, he does in an overwhelming fashion to help us. And this is another example of it. Overwhelming proof that, that in the truth of the Catholic Church, in the doctrine of purgatory and of hell. Overwhelming proof that, that there, there is life after death and people go there and somebody has come back. So what is our excuse? What is our excuse knowing this, having this story, having this example, and not doing anything about it? Not even knowing about it not reading the lives of the saints, not caring enough to study for our souls. How many people go to, go to college or to advanced uh, studies in some, in some field, engineering or math or science, to get a degree? Well, I have to get a good job. Well, this would get me a great paycheck. What about your soul? You spend four years, six years, eight years in secular study for this world. How many minutes have you spent on your spiritual reading? So we will have no excuse. Uh, when we stand before the judgment seat of God and there is St. Christina the Astonishing and all the other saints looking at us and saying, look, we tried. God gave me the grace to come back from the dead. And she had a choice. She could have stayed in purgatory, but she chose to come back to earth and suffer these frightful torments for our benefit. It wasn't for hers. She wasn't getting any more merit. She could have just stayed in purgatory and that's it. She came back to earth for our sake. 
Now, do we take that? Do we really take it seriously that people have come back from the dead, hell is real, people go there. Purgatory is real, and people go there. And we talk about, oh yeah, I'll probably go to, to purgatory, ha ha, he he, right? Like some kind of joke. Listen to these torments. Stayed outside in the freezing, wind, the, the freezing weather all year long. Uh, hunger, thirst, cold, all the things that, that we say make us miserable, and like, that's why I'm so crabby is because I had a bad day. We'll try spending a week in a freezing river. So, these are the kinds of things we need to be able to tell ourselves. We need to be able to meditate upon this, to, to, to feel, right? To really, really present to ourselves the reality of death, the reality of judgment, so that we can change now. How many people have entered into a circumstance and said to themselves, Oh, I knew this was coming, but I didn't know it would be like this. I didn't know how I would feel. Now that the moment is here, I just didn't know. I had no expectation. So don't let that be the moment of death. When we are at our judgment and we think, oh, I had no idea. We have no excuse for having no idea. Don't let that be you. Think about it now. Think about your judgment. Think about your death. Because now you have time. Then it will be too late. Now you have 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ahead of you to do something about that. The saints always say, there is no more important science than the science of learning to die well. And if you want to die well, we must live well. Every day of our life, right? Preparing for that one most important day, the last day, after which our entire eternity will depend. So again, very useful considerations for a requiem mass. Every time we attend the funeral of a, of a departed one, we, sh we should think of these sentiments, pray very much for the departed souls, ask for their, their prayers on our behalf. Uh, uh, not, not only that we might be, be um, freed from purgatory quickly, but that we might be spared the necessity of going to purgatory because we have conquered our vices and sins in this life. And rather than stacking up uh, um, um, uh, sins to expiate after death, we expiate them here. We cease and discontinue sinning and begin living a life of, of prayer and penance uh, in reparation for ourselves and for others. Uh, let us pray to uh, St. Christina the Astonishing and to all the saints uh, that we might have that grace. And God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you, and thank you very much.